with some of our products that you know about, but we're going to talk about it maybe a little differently than you've heard before. Because we're all here to talk about everything is Revita and anti-aging and youth enhancement. Well, what is aging anyway? Generally, it's how many birthdays? You know, chronological aging. But the aging that we care about is biological aging. In other words, how old are you really from the outside in and the inside out? And what does that mean and what can we do about it here at Jeunesse? Well, it's all about balance. And by the way, former professional ballet dancer, yes, that is me. Not recently, but that's me. <laughs> um, it's a balance between our damaged cells or our cells that go away because they're too old and our cells that are new and revitalized and created again. It's that balance. That is what makes aging or not. So why do they get damaged to begin with? Because we're all about cells. Everything is about cells. Well, things get oxidized, like rusty nails, or why do apples turn brown when you leave them out and you cut them open? Oxidation, that damages cells. What else damages cells? Inflammation. What can cause inflammation? Pollution can cause inflammation. Eating too much sugar, I hate to say it, but it's true, can cause inflammation. All those things create damage to our cells. And also too much stress. A little bit of stress is good because it makes you like revved up and excited. But too much stress, again, damages the cells, ages us prematurely. And a poor diet, processed foods, deep fried foods, eating the wrong oils, because there are good oils out there, but most of the time we're presented with the wrong oils. What else? Lack of exercise, this is huge, but this is one of those things, it's not that you do it and you should stop doing it, but if you don't do it, it's not good and it will actually cause damage to the cells. And then, of course, smoking. Just don't smoke. Just, and if you are, do whatever you can to try to quit. So, that's what ages us and ages cells. So what happens is, over the years, oxidation, inflammation, and all those things, and we start to age. We don't look so good, we don't feel so good. We need more revitalized. We need more revitalized, healthy cells to tip the balance backwards. So, what do we do? We have to have a healthy lifestyle. We, we have to, I hate to say exercise, because exercise sounds really boring and sounds like something you just don't want to do. But, moving your body could be fun. Move your body in all sorts of ways. So, just move your body. That's the same thing as exercise. Don't smoke. Try to do things that decrease stress. Antioxidant foods, rich antioxidant foods, we're going to talk about that. Lots and lots of good, healthy nutrients and supporting our own adult stem cells. It's very, very important. It's part of this whole system of healthy lifestyle. So there, decrease stress, move your body, you don't have to jump rope. You can do other things that are fun. Antioxidant foods. What do we have that we've had for a while here in Malaysia? What do we have that would be considered an antioxidant food? Well, I'll give you a hint. It has in it Japanese knotweed. It has in it Japanese knotweed. And why is Japanese knotweed special? Japanese knotweed has been shown to have so many health benefits. And why? Because Japanese knotweed has a large amount of an incredible nutrient called resveratrol. And we have Japanese knotweed in what? Reserve. Reserve. Reserve, exactly. And reserve is like the most yummy health food I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> so super healthy, super, ta super tasty. I've never, I actually have never met anyone who really, really hates it. They, everybody just 
really loves it. It's amazing. Has the Japanese not wheat for the resveratrol? And it's in a gel. This is really important for resveratrol and for this whole nutrient. Has to be in a liquid form. Not every nutrient to be well absorbed needs to be in a liquid form. Not everyone, but resveratrol does. It needs to be in a liquid form to truly get absorbed by the cells. And that's why it's so important that we put reserve in a little gel pack. No artificial sweeteners, no artificial colors, no added sugar, as sweet as that is, that's nature. That's nature, that sweetness. That's not, that's not anything that we put in extra. And then what did we do? We tested reserve. We tested it for something called CAP-E. The CAP-E test is a test for antioxidant strength. But it's different than something that you might have heard of before called ORAC. ORAC is an old-fashioned test. It's a test tube test. And we're not test tubes. We're people when we have cells, right? So we did the cap -E because what cap -E can show us is does the antioxidant that's being tested in reserve get into and protect live cells? This is a kind of a fancy picture of a cell membrane, meaning all of our cells are surrounded by this membrane, and it's very complicated. You see how it's two layers and all these different parts to it. It's not just like a little like line around your, around your cells. So the antioxidants have to go through that membrane to actually do any good to the body. What we proved with the cap -E test is the antioxidants in reserve can get into and protect our cells, get into and protect live cells. So this is vital in that whole, remember, healthy lifestyle, youth enhancement is reserve. It also does something very unique. It supports the activation of a gene called SIRT1. You may not realize it, genes are what make us us. So there's genes that make people have um, blonde hair, and blue eyes, or brown eyes. Different genes do that. Genes also are not turned on, meaning we have them in ourselves, but they don't, they don't, they're not active. The CERT1 gene is very important for longevity. It's very important for supporting our stem cells. And it's not turned on automatically. You have to do really good things in your lifestyle like take preserve to activate that gene to help with longevity, to help with keeping yourself feeling great. And it's also involved supporting our natural adult stem cells in the body. And you're going to hear more about that, so I'm not going to go into that in great depth, but you're going to hear more about that from a very special guest that we have here today. So, that's inside out, right? Yep. Now, there's also outside in, because the largest organ in the body is? Skin. Skin, correct. So, we have instantly ageless, because instantly ageless is the perfect gratification for the microwave, we, you know, the microwave generation, the, we want it now, we, if it takes more than two minutes, we lose interest. This is what Instantly Ageless was designed for. Because as you can see, those changes, those changes right there, especially this one, look at that. That is the same eye, this is not opposite, same eye in two minutes. So what does that do? Is it long lasting? No, no. it lasts six hours. But does it get people's attention? Yep. Yes. It gets their attention. Now you have their attention. Now you can talk to them about Luminous. You can talk to them about Reserve. You can talk to them about, I don't know, Revita Blue. Blue. Right. Because you have their attention. So with Luminous, you have also 
stem cell technology. You have stem cell technology from the outside in, designed by 15 years of research by Dr. Nathan Newman, a cosmetic dermatologist in Beverly Hills, California, that helped decrease the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. That is, again, none of the bad stuff. No parabens, no oils, no things like that. No bad stuff, only the good stuff for your skin. So, well, there you go. I don't have to say anything. That's what's fun about women ass. That's what the difference is when you give your skin what it needs. When you can let the body rejuvenate itself. So, just briefly, we don't just say, oh, look at those before and after pictures, they're so great. We'll just use those. Yeah, we'll use those, but then we'll take it to a lab, a third party lab, and we'll do an independent study to see if it actually has the same results with people who don't know it's network marketing, don't know it's Jeunesse, don't know it's called Luminous, don't know it has stem cell technology. They don't know anything, they're just told, they're okay, put this on your face. And then fill out these questionnaires. 87% of the people felt that their skin looked younger. 87% felt it was smoother. It had a glow, a luminosity. 74% thought it was more firm. But the most important thing is when they ask them, would you recommend this to your family and friends? 100% of the people said yes. Woo! That's pretty amazing. So it's not only because you're offering it and you have a business and we can, you know, you can make commissions and things like that. That's Luminous is on its own. People want it. So we have products that people want, and boy, as a friend of mine says, boy howdy, this is, there's another product coming that people are really going to want to. So remember, it's always about balance. It's about healthy balance from the outside in and the inside out. And before, all we had, at least here in Malaysia, was reserved from the inside out. Now we have a new amazing product. Roll video. Hello everyone, I am Christian Rocco. Now I have heard that you have been waiting for quite some time for a new product. Well, here it is. This new product is the result of more than 15 years of work in the field of stem cell research, and it is only available through genetics. Now, this product is for everyone. Fat, lean, short, tall, um, active, sedentary, athletes, intellectuals. This product is for everyone, because everyone has stem cells, and stem cells are the natural repair system of the body. I have seen over the years what a product like this can do. This product can truly enhance the quality of life of anyone taking it. People will feel the difference, uh, which, needless to say, can be huge for the business. Now, knowing what this product can do for people and understanding the force of Jeunesse in the marketplace, there is no question in my mind that this is one of the greatest opportunities that this industry has ever seen. So you don't want to miss it. for somewhere around 12 years. He's an amazing individual. I have great respect for what he's done in this field. He has a graduate degree from McGill University. He is an author of many scientific studies on stem cell nutrition. And he is the author of a best-selling book called Cracking the Stem Cell Code. Please welcome. Christian, go home.
you have come to Malaysia many times in the past, it's actually almost my second home. So to be able to do this reveal of Revival Blue in Malaysia is, is just beyond belief. So this is really, really great. <clears throat> you may not know, or maybe some of you know, the amount of work and dedication that went behind not only the development of Revival Blue, but to bring it here in Malaysia first. So you have an absolutely awesome team here with your Jeunesse Global in Malaysia. So really a good hand for them. <clears throat> when we do, oh, oftentimes, when uh, we make a scientific discovery, it is first received with resistance. Then over time, some people start to see that there's some good common sense to this discovery, and they start to study it. They put it to the test. And this whole process can take 5, 10, 15 years, at the end of which all the studies and all the tests either uh, prove or demonstrate that the idea is not correct, or it proves that the concept is real, and then it becomes reality, and that's when you normally hear about it as being a discovery in the news and magazines. And the reason why I'm saying this is that 15 years ago, uh, a colleague of mine, Dr. Gita Jensen and I, made a discovery. Uh, we proposed a new concept. We published this in a journal called Medical Hypotheses. And in essence, what we proposed was that just like the human body has an endocrine system, a nervous system, a cardiovascular system, an immune system, the body also has a repair and renewal system. It was a wild idea at the time. 15 years later, it is becoming mainstream medical knowledge. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is I really want you to understand the amazing, amazing opportunity that we have here with Revival Blue. This is a product that is a discovery. If you talk to people about stem cells out there in the marketplace, most people will not know what we'll be talking about today. So it is truly novel, and yet, it is 15 years in the work of proving and testing. So it's a time-tested concept that is novel, and it's brought to the marketplace by one of the strongest companies on the planet. I mean, is that an opportunity or what? Yeah. This, is, this is what we have. <clears throat> so let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we have here. So, whenever you talk about stem cells, you hear about stem cells, you read about stem cells, in magazines, uh, in the news, uh, on the internet. We oftentimes talk about cells that are isolated from a source. It can be your bone marrow, it can be the blood, it can be fat tissue. Then they are manipulated in the lab, and then they are injected into your body. The thing that we never talk about is that as you're sitting right now, stem cells are in your blood. They are in your bone marrow. They are in your fat tissue. So if stem cells have such a potential for tissue repair, then what are they doing in your body? What is the role of your stem cells as you're sitting here from the day you're born until the day you die? What do they do? And when we understand what stem cells are doing in the body, it literally changes the way that we, that we see health and wellness. And that's what I want to show you today. So here's what stem cells are doing in the body. What I'm going to show here, I'm backing it up with a few studies that I've selected to show this, this whole concept but understand, there are hundreds, if not thousands of studies behind this concept. So anytime there is an injury or a problem into a tissue uh, or an organ, and a lot of these studies were done with heart attack, with stroke, bone fractures. I'm not telling you, telling you here that we're, with re Revitamu, we're going to deal with stroke or heart attack or bro broken bones. That's not the point. I'm kind of describing what you can find in the scientific literature. Here's what's happening. The day that you have an injury, within five, six, seven, eight hours, there are compounds that are being released by the affected tissue. Compounds like granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Don't learn this, this word, it's not in the test at the end of the day. It's just for you to understand these compounds have been identified. They reach the bone marrow and then they trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. Within two, three days after the injury, the number of stem cells start to increase in the bloodstream. And will reach anywhere between three to ten times the baseline level of stem cells. Now when stem cells circulate everywhere in your body, they don't know where to go. 
they don't know which is the tissue that is in need of repair. So oftentimes that's why after a few days after a heart attack, people start to hear voices. It's the stem cells saying, where do I go? No, it's not true. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you were listening. So stem cells circulate everywhere. They don't know where to go. So their way to find what is the affected tissue that is in need of repair is that after a few days, the affected tissue will start to release another compound locally in the area where the tissue is affected. So when stem cells circulate everywhere in the body, when they go into the fine capillaries of the affected tissue, that compound is secreted locally, it touches, it connects with the stem cells, and then it triggers the whole process of migration of the stem cells out of the blood into the tissue. When stem cells start to migrate out of the blood into the tissue, in the tissue they will start to crawl literally to the site of the injury, and when they get into contact with cellular debris of that tissue, they will start to proliferate and transform into cells of that tissue. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. This is your natural repair and re renewal system. From the day you are born, when something needs to be handled in your body, stem cells do it. So in this whole process, we have the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, we have the circulation of stem cells, migration, proliferation, and differentiation. These are the obvious steps that stem cells must go through in your body to accomplish what we just talked about. But of all of these, the one that has been the most studied is the release of stem cells from the bone, from the bone marrow. For no other reason than in medical science, you can only study things for which you have a tool. You can only study planets when you've got a telescope. And you can only study micro, uh, bacteria when you've got a microscope. So we have molecules known to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, and the consequence of this is that you've got more stem cells in circulation. So let's look at the scientific literature. What do we know about the link between how many stem cells you have? I'm going to use here a number of studies that you can find in the medical and scientific literature. What I want to make clear before I go into this is that in medical science, we never study health. If you take a healthy person and you give that person white rice for one year, and after one year that person is still healthy, you cannot say white rice is good for health because that person is still healthy. Right. You cannot study health, it's difficult. So oftentimes we study disease. You take a problem and you see if something can improve the problem. So these are the studies that we need to look at to understand the role of stem cells in the body. My aim here is not to show you or suggest that Revita Blue will have an effect on diseases. That's not the point. Let's look at what we know between the link of stem cells, how many stem cells we have in the bloodstream and health. So this is a study in which scientists took 500 individuals at risk for cardiovascular problems. So people with high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, high stress level, those kinds of risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And then they counted the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of these individuals. Just like we can count red blood cells, and the number of red blood cells that we have, uh, we know that we have a healthy range. If you're below the healthy range, we will say you are anemic. In the same way, we have a certain number of stem cells. The only difference is that to this day, there's no healthy range for stem cells that has been established. We just have different levels of stem cells. So they counted the number of stem cells in the blood of these people, and then for one year, they observed the occurrence of any kind of heart problem. Heart attack, angina, arrhythmia, whatever the problem. So what we've got here in that graph, anytime you see a line that goes down, oops, sorry. Anytime you see a line that goes down, this is a person experiencing heart problem. So they separate these people in three groups. First group with a lot of stem cells in their bloodstream, average number of stem cells in their bloodstream, and low level of stem cells in their bloodstream. It's pretty obvious that the group of people with fewer stem cells experience way more cardiovascular problems. The conclusion of that study is that the number of circulating stem cells was the best predictor of cardiovascular health. More stem cells in circulation means that more stem cells are available to participate to the very normal process of tissue repair. So that if you have risk factor, but you simply naturally help the tissue to repair itself, well, the problem just doesn't show up. It's really that simple. 
Same kind of things were shown with not just the heart, other aspects of human health. Now, once this was documented in the scientific literature, it obviously begged the question, if there's such a link between the number of stem cells in the bloodstream and the ability of the body to repair itself, what if we were able to increase the number of stem cells in circulation, could we change the course of the development of different kinds of health problems? So again, I'm going to show some studies with diseases. My point here is not to talk about diseases, it's simply to show that stem cells in your bone marrow do have the ability to help the body repair itself. Okay, first study was published or was done by the National Institute of Health in America. So it's a very prestigious research organization. So the team of scientists took mice and they stopped the blood flow to the heart so they triggered a heart attack. Then they let the animal recover and the control group, nothing was done to it. The experimental group, they simply injected cytokines like granulocyte colony stimulating factor, the kind of molecules that the body normally secretes when there's an injury to call for stem cells. So the only difference between the two groups, nothing was done to the group, the control group. The experimental group had, let's say, 10 to 100 times more stem cells in circulation. When they looked at these animals 27 days later, in the control group, we can see severe scar tissue in the ventricular wall, no new blood vessels, 17% survival, and fairly poor cardiovascular health. In the group that had more stem cells, we have complete renewal of the ventricular wall, functional new blood vessels tapping in the other ventricles, 73% survival, and quasi-normalized cardiovascular function. I am not telling you we have found a way to cure the consequence of a heart attack. I'm just showing you, because this protocol, as used here for reasons that will be beyond this presentation, cannot be used in humans. But it shows one thing that is, to me, amazing. It shows that if you can really put more stem cells in circulation, the body does have the ability of using these extra stem cells to put them to good use to repair damaged tissues in the heart. That's not the only studies. Many studies have documented that same thing in the heart. Here's one other example with diabetes. To show that this whole process also works for diabetes, and again, I just want to be clear, I'm using diseases studies because I have no other choice. You need to use that to document these phenomena. So to show that we can repair the pancreas by simply using our own stem cells, we need to show two things. We need to show that stem cells from the bone marrow naturally, without doing anything, can leave the bone marrow, travel to the pancreas, and become normal insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. If we can show that this is a natural process of the body, then the next step is, by putting more stem cells in circulation, can I enhance this natural process to a point where it could have an effect on the health of the pancreas? Is that fine? Good enough? Okay. First study, very, very well designed study. Scientists took male mice and they did a, a genetic manipulation. So when this male mouse is an embryonic stem cell, so one cell, they go and they connect the gene for insulin to the gene that codes for green fluorescent protein. So if a cell in that, and then the animal develop, so now you have the full mouse, and if one cell in that mouse starts to make insulin, it is also going to make green fluorescent protein, so it will turn green. So you can see it, it's green. No other cells in your body is green. Even on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Now they took female mice, they irradiated the female mice, which kills all the stem cells in their bone marrow, and they injected male stem cells into the female mice. So what do we have? We have female mice whose bone marrow is now made with stem cells that have the Y chromosome, because it came from a male mouse, so I can, I can identify it, and if any one of these cells start to make insulin, it will turn green. So they isolated cells from the pancreas a few weeks later, and if you look at that cell, you use a fluorescent green light, it has started to, to, to transcribe. They are from the pancreas, by the way. So they left the bone marrow, migrated to the pancreas, and now in the pancreas, I have these cells that start to transcribe the gene for insulin. 
But do they really make insulin? Using an antibody for insulin with a red marker, they do make insulin, or it does make insulin. And the beautiful thing here is that it's not a Frankenstein cell that is overproducing or underproducing. It's right in between the other two cells. It is just a normal cell of the pancreas. And my message today, as you'll see as we move along, is that this, what we see here, is actually what is happening in every single one of you. We lose cells every day, we replace them. At the age that we all have in this room, there's not one single cell in your pancreas that you're born with. You've all lost them, they've all been replaced by stem cells from the bone marrow. This is just a very natural process, and it contains the Y chromosome, so it is a stem cell that comes from the bone marrow. So the conclusion of that study is very clear. Stem cells from the bone marrow can, on their own, naturally leave the bone marrow, go to the pancreas, migrate in the pancreas, and become natural insulin-producing cells. So far, so good? Very good crowd. They told me genetic people are smart, but I didn't realize it was that smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next study. If I increase the number of stem cells in circulation, can I really change the function of the pancreas? So this is an islet of Langerhans. It is the unit in the pancreas that is making insulin. Now, when we do animal studies, you may know this, or maybe you've never thought about it, but to find a mouse that has Parkinson, you won't find a mouse that has Parkinson. You won't find a mouse that has Alzheimer's. A mouse that has forgotten what is a cat, you won't find one. You won't find a mouse with multiple sclerosis. You won't find a mouse with diabetes. In order to study diseases in animals, you need to find a way to generate the problem that is identical or similar to what we have in humans, and then you find a way to resolve it. So you put aluminum on the, on the brain of a mouse, and it will develop something that resembles Alzheimer's, for example. And then you start to resolve the problem. With diabetes, there's a toxin, a bacterial toxin called streptocytosin. When you inject, it in the, inject, inject that toxin in the mouse, within 24 to 48 hours, those islets of Langerhans look like this. These animals now are fully diabetic. They cannot make insulin. So now, next study, or next group, they took a, a, a group of rats in which they injected streptocytosin, but also did endogenous stem cell mobilization they released the animals on stem cells. And you can see that you got a partial reconstitution of these islets of Langerhans, but it was enough to produce enough insulin. These animals have been normalized. The same study was done in humans. 14 individuals recently diagnosed for insulin-dependent diabetes. They did two rounds of release of their own stem cells. Of those 14, 13 were independent from insulin between three to 36 months. And at the end of 36 months, they stopped the study. Many of them were still fine. I am not telling you we've discovered a treatment for diabetes. That's not the point. The point is when I say that stem cells from the bone marrow, real, from your bone marrow, from your blood, really has the potential to help repair your body, that's the data that is behind that very, very simple claim. Good? Okay. Okay. Now, when we talk about health in the whole wide world of health and wellness, it's not necessarily expressed that way, but if you think about it, we normally, traditionally, see health as uh, something where at, let's say, 20, 25 years old, you reach peak health, and from then on, it's kind of a slow decline. You know, you reach 30, 35, and then little aches and pains are starting to show up. And then, so it's like, if I make an analogy, it's like you're born with a bank account, with a set amount of money in your bank account, and we tell you spend it wisely, but there's a point where you start to lack money. But stem cell research has revealed that that is not what health is doing in the body. Health is actually a balance between two phenomena. Every day of our lives, we lose cells. Every day of our lives, we replace them. Between now and next month, or between now and last month, nothing has changed in your health. It looks like everything has been stable. But during that month, you have lost a lot of cells and you have replaced them. There's a dynamic process that is taking place in your body every day. If I take the analogy of the bank account, it's not that you're born with a set amount of money. It's that all your life, you need to have enough money to match up your expenses. 
If you have an income that matches your expenses, you're balanced, you're fine. The problem is if one day you start to lose more cells than you can replace or renew your tissue, then you start to lose ground and then problems start to show up. And if you can increase the ability to renew tissue, then you can help the body slowly help, uh, to, go to, to be healthier, to, to function more normally. So if I make the analogy here of the bank account, it would be like telling you, when you go bankrupt, is it because you've lost your money? Intuitively, you might say, yeah, it's because I've lost my money. But most of, most of the time, it's because you've lost your income. It's the income that is the problem. And the issue with that curve here is that as we age, the problem is that the balance shifts. As you reach 25, 30 years old, slowly the red marrow and your bone marrow shift to yellow marrow and you make fewer and fewer stem cells. The number of stem cells that you have in your bloodstream goes down as you age, so that balance is lost, so slowly you have express more and more problems. So with all of this curve, the question is, what if we could, as we age, bring back that balance? Then you basically allow the body to just age much more healthily. You can help, you can tap into the natural ability of the body to remain healthy during the entire life of an individual. You won't become immortal. You're not going to live for 120 years. But whatever years that you have, you just have a greater quality of life. And that's the whole idea behind this. There's another interesting conclusion to draw from this. And I'll get a little bit more philosophical here, but how do we define in our modern society health? If you think about it, we define health as the absence of disease. And it's ridiculous. If, I, if, if you go and see your doctor and you say, I don't feel very well, and he does a bunch of tests, and at the end he cannot put a label on you, a diagnosis, then he's going to say, no, you're fine. You'll see it, but I'm not fine. I don't feel well. No, you're fine. How many of us live our life and we don't sleep like we used to? Our memory is not as good as it used to. There's a little bit more pain in the morning. Air color has shifted a little bit toward the lighter part. We don't have the same health that we used to have, and we get used to it. We think that this is normal aging. We think that not being able to do everything that we want to do is just normal. What all of this information is telling us is that no, your body has the ability to really reach its optimal health. All you have to do is support this natural aspect of the body and put more stem cells in circulation. If all of this is true, there is one way to look at it. And this is an article that I published about five years ago in which as we were talking about all this process, uh, to prove that this is true, statistically, we can ask this question. If there is such a link between the number of stem cells in circulation and the ability of staying healthy, it means that people who have stayed healthy statistically should have more stem cells in their bloodstream. And people who have lost their health should have fewer stem cells. And now today there's about 50 studies or so in the scientific literature that have looked at that. Taking people that have developed various kinds of degenerative problems, counting the number of stem cells in their bloodstream, and the outcome is that you've got about half the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various kinds of health problems. There's a direct relationship between how many stem cells you've got in your blood and the ability of your body to really regain its optimal health. And to me, that is the key message. The key message is whatever the problem is, it's not so much about the problem, it's about giving back to your body its natural ability to express its optimal health. So, with all of this being said, what can we do to put more stem cells in circulation? Interesting question, right? Exercise. Strong exercise. Not a walk in the park. We're talking about running a marathon, intense rowing, and I believe that it's just the intense exercise that leads to micro lesions and muscles, tendon ligaments that essentially trigger the repair process so it increases the number of stem cells in circulation. Sleep, deep sleep. When you are in deep REM sleep, you secrete melatonin that supports the vibration and proliferation of stem cells in the brain. Anti-inflammatory food. Inflammation in your pore reserve. Systemic inflammation in your body creates noise that reduces the ability of stem cells to be able to identify which tissue in your body is in need of repair. Fasting. We've all heard about how fasting is good for health, 
but we've never really scientifically understood why. One of the explanations is that after three days of fasting, you significantly increase the number of stem cells in circulation. We know that stress is not good for health, but why? Yes, it increases blood pressure, it does a lot of things, but one thing that we have discovered is that stress hormones from the adrenal glands, cortisol, when it's in your bloodstream, will suppress the ability of stem cells to migrate into tissues and proliferate. So you live in New York, Los Angeles, Tokyo, and so you have a lot of stress. I understand in Kuala Lumpur there's not much stress, but <laughs> you live in places with a lot of stress. <clears throat> Sometimes for one, two, three, four, five decades, but during all that time, your ability to repair and maintain your health compensate for the natural cell loss, uh, loss of cells then is reduced. So obviously there's a link between stress and a lot of different kinds of health problems. Cigarette smoking, for the smoker and people around you, it's the same effect. It suppresses the ability of stem cells to migrate in tissue and proliferate. So if you run a marathon every day, if you sleep very, very well, you eat a lot of antioxidant food, you're vegetarian, you fast three times, three days per week, you control st stress and you're not exposed to cigarette smoking, you may not be interested in what I'm going to say now. But if you don't do all these things, then in the past 15 years, my main focus of research was to study plants that have been documented to support the natural release of stem cells from the bone marrow. The first one is a blue green algae called Aphanizomenon Frost Agua. Within one hour of consumption, we can see an increase of about 30% in the number of circulating stem cells. So all this adventure, all my studies and my research on stem cells started with the discovery of how this plant was working in the body. From there, the question that I asked was, what else is known in the world, in local pharmacopoeias, in different parts of the world, known to be associated to a broad variety of health benefits. And the thinking process behind this is that if a plant supports the release of your own stem cells, they will migrate in the liver of a person who will then experience better liver function. In the pancreas of somebody else who will have better glucose metabolism. In the brain of somebody else, the joint of somebody else, the lung of somebody else. So we should see a broad variety of health benefits. And there are some of these ingredients on our planet have been historically associated with these kinds of benefits. And one of them is seabuckthorn berry. You know seabuckthorn berry? It's been used for centuries in Tibetan medicine, Mongolian medicine, uh, Chinese medicine. What is interesting about this fruit, that I find, it's one of the things that I found so attractive and fascinating, is that whenever you name a plant in science, most of the time it's named according to its physical characteristics. So you take, for example, AFA that we talked about just before, a Thanizomenon flosakwa means invisible flower of water. Beautiful, isn't it? But there are a few plants that have been named not on the basis of their physical characteristics, but on the basis of what they do to the body. Very rare, but Hippophae rhabnoides, Sibacton is one of them. Hippophae means, hippo is horse, phi is like, it means shining horse. It's Alexander the Great, as he was going through his conquest in Asia, at some point he abandoned a herd of wounded horses in a field of seabuckthorn, and when he came back a few weeks later, he had a herd of vibrant, healthy horses with a shiny coat. And a shiny coat in a horse means a healthy coat. So he brought seabuckthorn back to Greece, and now it spread to Europe, to uh, Europe, 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 <laughs> to all this part of the world. And now it has integrated many, many local medicines. So we develop a very specific extract of seabuckthorn berry, and when we feed this extract, we provide this extract to individuals, all these studies were done in humans, it leads to an increase in the number of circulating stem cells, but after two hours, it is still climbing. So it's an effect that is much more robust than what we originally had with AFA. Now the next ingredient in uh, Revitablue is another ingredient that I worked on. Uh, it's a specific species, unique species of aloe coming from Madagascar. The problem with this type of aloe is that the supply is very small and not sufficient to satisfy a company like Chedes. We count on you to bring this product to 
all the 140 countries, if not more, and to talk to everybody in there. I see Jeunesse with this product double within the next few years. Would that be nice? Yes. So, so we won't have enough of that alloy to satisfy that. So as we tested, or as I tested, various types of alloy, we find one other type of alloy that had the same effect. It's a specific extract of aloe, and when we give that to individuals, we see likewise an increase in the number of circulating stem cells that last over time. Now, over the 15 years of study, there's one thing that I have observed is that releasing stem cells is great, but it's not, you don't get the best just by releasing stem cells. If you can support the migration into tissues, then you get even better results. So you make them leave the bone marrow and you facilitate the process of migration into tissues. So one ingredient that does that is beta-glucan. So about half an hour after consumption of beta-glucan, you see a drop in the number of circulating stem cells because we enhance the ability of stem cells to listen to the tissues that are affected. So by better listening to these tissues, when the stem cells circulate in the fine capillaries, it's called to the tissue and it migrates more easily. So these are the, the uh, four key ingredients that we have in Revitamin. So you will see with all of these, the nice synergy. So we are getting now into clinical trials to study specifically the synergy. But you've got four ingredients, three that stimulates the release or support the release of stem cells from the bone marrow through various mechanisms of action, and one that supports their migration into tissue. So to show you a little bit more about these ingredients, here's your video. Source from the Tibetan Plateau and the crisp waters of Oregon's Upper Klamath Lake. Jeunesse has developed a patent-pending formula enhanced with blue-green algae, sea buckthornberry, aloe vera, and coconut water. This botanical beverage mix is designed to help nourish and support your body. Introducing Revata Blue, formulated by a pioneer in stem cell research. Refreshing Revata Blue contains three legendary plant-based ingredients. Blue-green algae, also known as AFA, a phanosomenon floss aqua, is found and extracted from Oregon's pristine Upper Klamath Lake. Blue-green algae is world-renowned as one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Harvested from the Tibetan Plateau, sea buckthornberry is packed with antioxidants and has been used for centuries in Chinese, Mongolian, and Tibetan traditional medicine for longevity and vibrant health. Grown in tropical climates around the globe, aloe vera has been used for almost 6,000 years for its wellness benefits. Taken daily, there is no question Revita Blue will be the go-to product for your life and lifestyle. Revita Blue, your best you. I love this slogan because once you understand really everything that we've talked about with stem cells and that you've got a product that supports this natural process in the body, that's exactly what Revital Blue does, your best you. It gives your body the potential to become the best that it can be. So the claims of the product are very simple. It supports this natural repair process in the body, renewal system. Uh, it has some side benefits on supporting immune function, providing antioxidant protection. It supports a general sense of well-being once your body is better able to maintain itself. Uh, and it supports uh, healthy aging. Now, of all of this, there's something for me that I found absolutely mind-boggling. Is that there are a lot of companies out there that would have been interested in a product like Revitable. But when I started to look at the products that you have, in the Jeunesse line of product, it is mind-boggling how this new product fits into this line of product just like a glove. There is an amazing synergy between these different products. And let me mention just a few of them. What is the main mechanism of action of Luminesce? Luminesce contains specific peptides, it does other things, but contains specific peptides that when you apply these on the skin, what it will do is that it will attract the stem cells that are in the circulation and make them incorporate the stem cell of the skin and then other peptides 
that will support the proliferation of these stem cells to then become the skin cells that will rebuild, rejuvenate, and just maintain your skin. That's one of the mechanisms of action behind luminescence. Now what happens if you have more stem cells in circulation and the same product can bring to the skin more of these regenerative cells? You suddenly potentiate the effect of luminescence. So by connecting these two products, and then there's another product in the picture, is that if you give them as building blocks, the building blocks that will allow these new cells to better repair the skin, you've got a powerful trio to help the skin rejuvenate. So try these two together. You take your vitamin blue, continue to use Luminesce, and, uh, and then you will see the difference as time goes by. Another big one is reserve. I mentioned it briefly before, but the ability of stem cells to be able to see what tissue is in need of repair, it's a little bit like if there's a, a light music that is playing in the background, and I'm telling you, follow where that music is. This is the stem cells trying to find where the, 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 the damaged tissue is in your body. And then I put a lot of noise out there. It's very difficult to find where it is. Inflammation and oxidative stress into your bloodstream is noise for your stem cells. So if you can reduce this, you facilitate uh, the ability of your stem cells to find where they need to go. So resveratrol will assist the ability of stem cells to find where to go. Aside from what Donna talked a little bit before, is that it affects certain genes that will do two things. It will support the ability of stem cells to migrate into tissue aside from its antioxidant properties and also help the population of stem cells of the bone marrow to better maintain itself as well. So now when you start to couple these together, then you're getting an amazing synergy. So as we go forward and we experiment more and more uh, with the synergy between uh, the other uh, Jeunesse product and Revital Blue, uh, we'll be able to talk more about it, but I think it's going to be a fabulous synergy. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I hope that it was enough for you to understand that you've got a life-changing synergy and opportunity. Thank you.